Cheers, everybody. Happy hump day. Is that right? Please tell me I'm right. It is Wednesday, right? <laughs> and I also feel a little bit, just a little bit funny. The fact that I'm in my beast mode shirt, ready to work out. Some of you asked me to flex. There you go. And I'm drinking my tea. But this is part of what we're talking about today. Also, I have this strange thing going on with my left eye watering. So happy hump day. Uh, for those of you that might be joining for the first time, my name is Kelly Alexa. I am CEO and founder of Fitfluential, which is where you are here. And um, welcome to our show. I'm going to call it a show now because we're starting to do Facebook Live, uh, not only on the, on the daily, but you're going to see a whole bunch more uh, different folks coming over here and doing different kinds of shows, different types of interviews, topics, and whatnot. So you're going to be able to learn from us here, learn from us on our podcast. We'll still be having Twitter chats. Um, we'll be on Instagram, Snapchat. I mean, you name it everywhere. But we are here to connect with you guys live as much as possible. And we've been really enjoying hearing your feedback as well. Not only here in the comments on Facebook, a lot of you guys have been pinging us afterwards, emailing us, giving us ideas for what you'd like to hear, what you'd like to learn. Um, so it's all good, but uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you feel led to and you are here while we're live, please forgive me, I was a little late today. Um, I had some technical difficulties yesterday. We had some audio issues uh, with the iPhone that I've been using. So went out and got my lavalier mic all ready and I'm missing an extension that I need for, for the iPhone. Go figure. iPhone 7 doesn't have the little pluggy in thing. So here's the deal. Cheers to you guys. I'm drinking tea. This is part of like, I'm going to weave this into our topic today about treating yourself and why it's important. But let me just take a little sip. And for those of you that drink tea, I, I'm a coffee drinker. Okay. I don't know if you're like me. This is part of the treat yourself theme. Okay. Um, but tea can be, not only does it have amazing health benefits, but it can also be something that number one, can help you drink more water. We all know that we're supposed to be drinking more water. How many of you hate? Let's get real, there's not many people that go, I love drinking water. How many people are like me and deep down inside, if you had it your way, you would drink nothing but, I'm just putting it out there, Diet Mountain Dew. I would drink Diet Mountain Dew all day if I could, but I know it's not right and it's not good for me. So I know I should be drinking water and I actually, mostly drink water and unsweetened iced tea. I fantasize about those other things and I would be lying to you guys if I told you I wasn't. Um, but what I have found is a good way between meals to not only get more water in, but also keep me from just mindless snacking. How many of you have issues with mindless snacking? I do. Um, is tea. Now this is the tea. I just had to share this with you and then I'm gonna dive right in. And this is a perfect segue into why you need to treat yourself. That's all there is to it. Treating yourself along the way in your fitness journey instead of viewing it as punishment, as torture, as denial, as extreme dieting, all of that stuff. It's gonna make you stick with it. It's gonna keep you motivated. A lot of you guys are asking about how do I stay motivated? How do I stay uh, amped up and fired up about the future? You, you can't be looking at fitness and getting healthier and developing muscle gain and fat loss as a punishment. If, if you punish yourself every day, ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody wants to live that way. So you gotta treat yourself along the way. If you need to be drinking more water, we all do, why not find a way to make it enjoyable? For me, I'm starting to dig hot tea. So I have my coffee, normally it's bulletproof coffee in the morning. Um, right now I'm doing a little different twist, but that is for another show and I'll explain why later. But um, I was looking up on Amazon, see this little teapot? And I will link down below to this stuff. Um, I found this little teapot because I, when I was recently in Chicago, I left, yes, I travel with my utensils. I travel with my Nutribullet for my Bulletproof coffee and my protein shakes. I travel with some of the stuff. So I left my tea kettle uh, or my little teapot for hot tea back at my parents' house. And I stumbled on this. I don't know if you can see this, but apparently this is, it's from Japan. And it's like the ideal way. Can you see this? for where your loose leaf tea goes. Hopefully I'm not gonna burn myself on live Facebook. But see how big that is? And because of the way this sits in this little tea kettle, it allows more room for all of these loose leaf teas, uh, tea leaves, excuse me. 
I'm using this. This is a new client of ours in Anami Tea, and I have never tried this uh, loose leaf hoji cha. Ho hopefully, I'm saying it correctly. But because this and this little teapot, you guys, was like twenty dollars, um, and you obviously want to be very careful with it. But you 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 get to keep your tea in there really loose, and it it gives it more room to breathe and brew. And I gotta tell you, I really dig it. So this is one of my new rituals that I do, especially in the morning, because I want to cut down on caffeine in, in the afternoon. Um, and I had to share, not only A, drinking tea can be a really nice relaxing ritual. You can try all these different loose leaf teas out there. Maybe none of you guys might do this, but I'm all about ladies, just getting some cute little teacups to go with it. Um, and then I would be remiss if I didn't tell you guys about this, because I discovered this product as well. Um, this is not a client of Fitful Angels. Um, but this kettle, I bought one for my parents. Do you see this? This also is like 40 bucks. It's a kettle that you plug in, and if you can see here, has all these different temperatures. Maybe some of you didn't know that when you brew hot tea, you're actually not supposed to use boiling water. Boiling water is not going to be favorable to brewing the, the best tea. It's actually supposed to be around 170 degrees. So if you see this, there's all these different settings. 200 degrees is what I set it for when I'm making my French press coffee, but 170 or 175 is what I set it for when I'm making tea. And then there's this brilliant keep warm button, see it? So I can go in the other room, be getting ready for Facebook Live, set this for 170, 175 degrees, and like while I'm sitting here doing Facebook Live with you, it's keeping it warm for me at the perfect temperature. How many of you have gone to make a cup of tea or something like that? You end up leaving and coming back and either your kettle has boiled over on the stove and it's burning the hole through the bottom, or you're like, ah, oh, I gotta start all over because you left it and you went into the other room. How many of you have done that? I've done that with eggs on the stove as well and gone through many, many pans. But anyway, I digress. So tea is just one little way to treat yourself. Why am I talking about treating yourself? I feel like I have to say treat yourself every single time I say it, just for consistency's sake. By the way, those of the, you that are here live, would you say hi? Let us know where you're from. I would really like to just say hi to anybody that's here. And if you're, if you're, if you're not ready to engage there, so be it. Say hi in the comments later. But I just wanna acknowledge those of you that are here live. So I'm getting ready for my day and I just spilled tea on this book that I'm gonna reference. And, <laughs> This is Kelly, sorry. Um, I'm getting ready for a podcast interview today at noon, and I have the pleasure of interviewing this lady uh, who authored this book. And as I was getting ready to, it was just prepping uh, and looking for what we're gonna be talking about today and looking at what she talks about in this book. A lot of it, it's the little book of healthy beauty, and it's called Simple Daily Habits to Get You Glowing. Now for those of you guys, hey Marsha, so proud of you. Marsha Schultz is in the house. She was watching some of our Facebook lives and is just taking a lot of the advice I've been sharing and, and she's amped herself up and she's back at it and ready to go. Good on you, Marsha, I'm so proud of you. Um, so don't worry guys, if, if there are guys here tuning in, this isn't just a show about healthy glowing skin. The point that this brought out to me, thank you for the likes as well, um, is I'm looking at this book and I'm thinking about all these little rituals and things that I have learned to do while I'm on a fitness journey with, I've got some big goals, people. You know, I've had major health issues in the past year, major hormonal imbalance issues, massive Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism. Uh, my body for the longest time would not shed this extra weight I had around my core. I was very frustrated. And how many of you can relate to the way that I have been where you're so frustrated with where you are, you so want to lose weight, build muscle, both, whatever, improve your health and wellness, and you, you kind of focus on what you need to do as it's like a punishment. You're, you're angry at your body, you're angry at what you haven't done, and, and you're looking at this, you know, what you're gonna eat and how you're gonna work out as this like life sentence. And it's so easy to get into that mindset where you're doing that and you're telling yourself, okay, I'm not allowed to have anything. I'm not, no going out with my friends, no, no drinking, no happy hours, no nachos, no this, no fast food. And then if you screw up one day, you're mentally beating yourself up in your head. We've all been there, okay? One of the things that I have learned so 
ridiculously close to home is this lesson is how much when we've got that inner stress going on when we've got that dialogue where we are focusing on our faults beating ourselves up um, berating ourselves for where we aren't are what we haven't done in the past how far we have to go focusing on denial focusing on punishment focusing on I'm not there yet you are literally it's like you're going to your fridge opening up the refrigerator seeing a can of not a can a jar it jug pick a word Kelly and stick with it of rotten milk and chugging it. W would you do that if you pulled out something from the refrigerator and you saw that it was all chunky and gross and moldy? Would you drink it? Uh, no, because it would taste disgusting and you would know that after you drank it, you would probably throw up, be bloated all day, have all kinds of stomach and gastrointestinal issues, and it would just be a non-pleasurable, positive experience. There'd be nothing good that could come of that. Well, guess what? When you're on your fitness journey, when you want to lose weight, when you want to build muscle, when you want to do both, when you want to uh, improve your cholesterol, say, when you want to uh, lower your blood pressure, when you want to balance your hormones, if all you do, and I have been there, people, I'm telling you, is focus on the negative, focus on extreme dieting, focus on what you haven't accomplished yet, pick yourself apart in the mirror, weigh yourself every day and go, nothing's happening, I'm not losing weight. You are literally doing the same thing, figuratively speaking, as going to the refrigerator, taking rotten food and eating it and thinking everything's gonna be okay. Because all of our bodies internalize stress and that's what you're doing is you're adding stress, you're jacking your cortisol and don't kid yourself to think that that is not going to have a, a reverse effect on your fitness goals, but it's also gonna make you sick. Trust me, it's gonna look different for each one of us. For me, when I am, am, am incredibly stressed, when I've got a lot going on, I tend, my body tends to show stress and release it in about, I'm gonna say three different ways. One of them is I get pretty severe headaches. The, uh, this past weekend, I actually had a, a, close to a migraine for two days. I've never had that before. I'm seeing that some of you probably have that as well. Um, and, and let me know in the comments below, what are some of the, ways that stress manifests itself in your life because again you will be surprised how much you can control this I used to think I couldn't my skin as well is something that shows stress and when I um, throughout this whole hormonal journey I was put on medication some extreme medication for my skin some of the worst medication on the planet one of my doctors years ago put me on Accutane that's been outlawed since I mean, this stuff is bad but when I get really stressed, I get these rock hard bumps on the back of my neck. Sometimes I get them on my shoulders. Sometimes I get them up here and they're like mosquito bites. And then I get stressed about the bumps. So I'd be scratching at the bumps and, and, and making them worse. And then that would stress me out. It's just this perpetual cycle. Headaches for me, um, pimples or, or like the bumps that would that would come onto my neck and my shoulders, so skin conditions. And then lastly, how many of you get just stomach issues? Um, sometimes it can be bloating um, for absolutely no reason. Sometimes it can be just stomach cramping. Sometimes I get just stomach cramping where I'm like, oh my, why is my stomach just churning? And it would wake me up in the middle of the night. These are my body's way of saying to me, here's the deal, Alexa, this is not cool. I am not happy with this and I'm going to let you know. You've got to start listening to your body and understanding that it's giving you signs all the time. If you have chronic stomach aches, chronic headaches, um, chronic uh, cramping like I said, skin conditions, and, and, and it's something that's not the norm for you, that is your body crying out to you going, this is not cool. And you have to start listening. And if you, again, take a step back and stop and pause and go, okay, I have fitness goals. This is what I wanna do. I wanna lose 20 pounds. I need to lose 75 pounds. I have to watch my blood sugar because my doctor told me I could be diabetic. Whatever it is for you, instead of looking at the process that you have to dive into to get where you wanna go as severe punishment this is awful, look at what I have to do. I can't have donuts anymore. I've gotta to go to the gym. I've gotta you know, not do this. Instead of having that attitude, why don't you look at this as like your body 
is a machine that is a beautiful thing, capable of so much more than you know. I am 48 years old and I am getting, especially now that I have my great doctor, Dr. Sebring here in Austin, helping fix me and, and my hormones and I'm not listening to bad advice from other people that didn't know what they were talking about because I've been guilty of that. When you're desperate, sometimes you listen to the wrong people. But now that I'm on my way to getting better, I feel better about myself at 48 and the future than I did when I was 30. So you should understand, this is not an age thing. This is not a money thing. This is not a where you live thing. You are capable of so much more than you possibly can imagine. So understand that and look at this journey as a treat like, hey, I'm gonna start studying myself. I'm gonna see what I'm capable of. If you've never lifted weights before, and I know some of you have written to me about this, you know, don't look at this like, oh my God, I've never done this. I don't even know what I'm doing in the gym. I don't know what a bicep curl is. I don't know what all those machines are. I'm so confused. Look at this as like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in the cool kids club. I'm gonna learn how to do this. Everybody starts somewhere, okay? You can liken this to anything in your life. I remember when I first started uh, my career out of college, I'd never used Microsoft Excel. Sadly, I use it a lot right now and I know how to use it because people taught me, because I dove in and I embraced it. With your fitness journey, stop looking at it like with dread, that it's all about denial, that it's all about punishment. Look at this as an opportunity and along the way, you've got to treat yourself. If that means doing little things like, hey, I want to drink more water, so I'm gonna focus on tea and this is gonna be exciting. I'm gonna try some new teas. And, and I mean, I have back in there, back in that cabinet there, I've got so many fun teas, like yogi teas with little messages on it. And yeah, I had fun going out and buying all these girly teacups. For me, that's fun. That like takes my mind off of it. It helps me drink more water and I've got a different attitude about it. What are some other things that you can do along the way on your fitness journey to, to treat yourself, treat yourself? I'm really, I gotta stick with it, even though I sound like a dork. I'm willing to do it for you guys. Give yourself the opportunity with food and with workouts and with rest every week to do some things that you love, to have some things that you love. You shouldn't be, and I mean, unless your doctor tells you this is something that you have to do and you have to be very specific and you, you can only eat these foods, okay? You should be able to have something that you love to eat every single day. You can get where you're going, still being very strict and following a plan, but still having treats every day. If that means that you want chocolate and you love chocolate every day, find a way that you can have a piece of chocolate every day. I remember my neighbor, it used to be those little dove hearts, and she's like, I figured this out and I've worked it into my macros so that I can have 150 calories of dove chocolate and I have one of these at every single one of my meals. Maybe it's M&Ms, maybe you're not good at controlling yourself with chocolate, so maybe for you it's crackers, maybe it's um, tea and you put honey in it. What, whatever it is, you should be treating yourself and giving yourself rewards right along the way. Um, when you're tired, you should be listening to your body. Treat yourself to an evening off. I took the day off yesterday, I didn't work out. And I came home, I finished uh, working around six or seven, and I'm like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna treat myself, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna have my amazing dinner, and I'm gonna watch a movie. Instead of going back into my office, trying to squeeze in a workout the last minute, my body needed to rest. That's how I treated myself yesterday. Um, it can be something as simple as a really fantastic hot bath at the end of the day with Epsom salts, which are great for your muscles, essential oils, which will make your house and your bathroom smell like a spa, candles, put some chill music on. That's another way to treat yourself. It's relaxing. It's a ritual that you can do every single day so that you can wind down. It's going to help you get better rest. It's going to help you get better sleep, but you're also pampering yourself. So many of us are unintentionally or maybe unconsciously beating ourselves up along the way. It's completely counter, it's, I don't wanna say counterintuitive, it's destructive. It's, it's completely the opposite of what you should be doing. You should be caring for yourself. You should, I interviewed Leslie Bradshaw on our Fit Fletcher Radio podcast and you guys should go look up this episode. Uh, she's a friend of mine from um, the agency where I used to work and she talked about when she decided 
after years and years of being a workaholic that she was going to get her health back, she said, I'm treating myself like I am a client. I treat myself like I am the boss and, and me, myself, I'm the client. I'm going to, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to motivate myself. I'm going to encourage myself. I'm going to tell myself when I need a break. Guys, start looking at yourself that way. I'm reading a book right now. It's called, I think, The Untethered Soul. And they really help you become aware of your inner voice and your inner dialogue and how critical it can be. And they're like, you got to start thinking of that inner voice as somebody who is in your home. And if you had somebody in your home that was criticizing your every move, criticizing you because you ate that sandwich instead of having a salad with no bread, criticizing yourself for the way you look, criticizing yourself for missing your workout, um, criticizing yourself because you have that, you know, oh, look at my belly fat, you know, whatever it is that you obsess about and you have that negative dialogue with yourself internally, if you had a real person in your home doing the same thing, you would kick their self, I almost said a naughty word, to the door. You would say, I'm not hanging around you. I don't want to be around somebody like that that treats me like that. But we do it to ourselves. So as I wrap this up, people, I really want you to start thinking about this because I have found as I moved myself out of in the past year, that place where I was doing that stuff, I was beating myself up internally. I was so frustrated. I was so down about all my health issues. I was so embarrassed um, about people looking at me and people judging me and not knowing what was going on. And I was so hard on myself. And all I was focused on was I'd come so far and I was three steps back. And I kept saying, why am I three steps back? Why am I three steps back? And all of that was this self-perpetuating stressful cycle where I wasn't getting sleep, I was getting headaches every single night at seven o'clock like clockwork. My skin was breaking out. I had major stomach cramping problems. I mean, I would stand talking to a colleague of mine and I'd be like, oh my God, oh my, and he's like, what's going on? It was really, really awful. I have now since focused on treating myself, self-care, slowing down, chilling out with work, establishing boundaries for myself, Doing, doing little things like I did yesterday where I came back and I knew I had stuff that I didn't finish that day. But I said, this is what my body needs. My body needs to just chill out and relax and sit back and watch some Mad Men that I hadn't watched before. And that's what I did. And guess what? My skin's better. I feel better. I'm losing weight. I'm reaching my fitness goals. I don't have the headaches that I had every night. In fact, I don't remember the last time with the exception of, I did tell you, I, I had that migraine this weekend and that was related to stress. Some crazy, crazy, crazy people situations that I'm dealing with. But sometimes stuff like that's gonna happen. Why add to your stress? Your stress and your lack of treating yourself, your lack of having compassion for yourself, it is going to delay all of your fitness results. Don't kid yourself. So make your life easier along the way. Commit that you are gonna treat yourself. Commit that you're gonna to listen to your body. Commit that you're gonna slow down. Commit that you're gonna have reasonable expectations with yourself. Commit to a long journey and, and look at it like this. Like, hey, I'm gonna, this is what I'm gonna do for the next 90 days and I'm gonna see how it works. And if it doesn't work, I'm gonna try something new after 90 days and I'm gonna, like I talked about yesterday, you track everything so you can see what works, what doesn't work. It really actually becomes quite fun, honestly. I mean, I'm not one of those cheesy people that's like, Excel spreadsheets are awesome! Tracking your fitness, tracking your journey, seeing how you're improving, and tracking how you treat yourself, just watch. You watch when you focus on treating yourself better, having compassion for yourself, self-love, self-care, self-respect, you watch how your stress will decrease and your fitness results will increase. That's all I have to say. I hope this was helpful, I know I know that everything I'm talking about is gonna resonate with so many of you watching this video because we hear it all the time. And I have been just as guilty of so many of these things in the past, but I gotta tell you, now that I'm focused on the good stuff, on not punishing myself, on self-care, on listening to my body, on chilling out, slowing down, it's benefiting all of the areas of my life and, and I'm flourishing, I'm, I'm flourishing. You're always gonna end up having stress. You'll always have days that aren't great where you stress out, but the more that you become aware of it and start tweaking and turning the other way and going in a different direction, a better direction, 
everything's gonna change, I promise you. So I'd love to hear from you guys. If you're watching this on the replay, thank you so much. Again, starting next week, we are going to have a whole lot of new faces here on Fit Lunch Will Facebook Live every single week. Uh, guests from our podcast are fantastic, amazing Fit Fluential Ambassadors. Um, and we wanna hear from you too. We are gonna do interviews, we're gonna have people on the show, um, and I'm just super, super, ridiculously excited to bring it all to you. So thank you for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Lastly, I just realized this because I didn't point this out before and I know you guys will ask. This t-shirt is from a partner of ours called ViewSport. And the cool thing about ViewSport uh, shirts, you gotta check them out, we'll link up below. They've made some amazing fit fluential shirts for us, but they have sweat activated technology. So when you wear these shirts and you sweat, secret messages come out on the back. It's really cool. You got to get you some. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great rest of the day. Make it incredible because you are.